So I think there's one lesson we all got from watching Loki. That lesson is, try not to bang yourself. It's not that hard. Loki Season 1, directed by Kate Herron, is the third series to premiere on Disney Plus this year, introducing us to Phase 4 of the MCU. Exploring what happened to the 2012 Loki after the events of Avengers Endgame where he steals the Tesseract and goes on to apparently explore alternate dimensions and near infinite timelines, opening the doors to the multiverse wide open. I gotta check out the finale last week with my buds on Discord, so now finally without further ado, here is what I thought about the show. I'm not late this time around. We're already halfway through the summer. It's unbelievable, right? So remember when the year first started, WandaVision was the only show this had come out that everyone was talking about. It's the big introduction to Phase 4. Seven months later, we got the Winter Soldier series, we got the Black Widow movie after a whole year of waiting, and we got an overload of trailers for all the new movies that come out the next few years. And yes, now we got the first full season of Loki's standalone show. And though these last three series have been unique and incredible in their own unique ways, Loki is definitely another unique one. Well, yes, WandaVision was the first show of the new series this year to really go out of the box on the classic MCU formula. Fuck my life. Why did you have to do that in the middle of a recording? Really go out of the box from the classic MCU formula and go for a unique style of paying homages to classic American sitcoms? Loki is definitely the first of these shows to go all the way with its unique style. Loki once again ditches the Avengers altogether and the themes explored in those films, going for a more late 50s, early 60s Doctor Who style of visuals, while having a more buddy cop story with his TVA agent partner Mobius, exploring alternate timelines and alternate dimensions while trying to catch other variants of himself. Oh yeah, did I mention that there's this organization called the TVA that protect apparently protects all of time as we know it? Simple as that. From the very first episode, you once again get to see what the show has perfected once more for Marvel, and that's the characters. From episode one, you're instantly amazed and hooked onto the world of the TVA and all its mysterious and fun characters, such as Mobius, the TVA agent, Ravona Renslayer, the head of the TVA, and Miss Minutes, the southern talking clock that is able to teleport wherever and whenever she feels like it. And of course, there's also Loki himself, being played once again by Tom Hilston, always being played magnificent by that guy. He's perfected that character in every single film he's been in now, every single episode of the show he's been, including all the times that he plays different characters or the other versions of himself that are also just an absolute blast and just strange experience to watch unfold, such as the love interest. That still feels weird to say. But fun and interesting characters aside, what this show also perfects as well is the world building. From the wonder of the TVA and the endless library of past, present, and future events of even other worlds, to exploring the apocalyptic events throughout human history where they attempt to go hunt down other Lokis, which gave me some of my favorite scenes throughout the show, such as Loki playing with the victims of Pompeii, or Loki doing drunk karaoke with some refugees on a train with Sylvie. Only a show with such a strange concept and such a strange plot such as Loki can you have moments like that where Loki is speaking Latin or Loki is apparently with the TVA agents at a futuristic mall in Alabama. It's just ideas that seem so strange and don't seem to add at all in the same story but the concept of the show is just so broad and just so infinitely filled with possibilities that it all manages to work. And to add on to what makes Loki such a unique show is its lack of focus on action. Despite, yes, some impressive action sequence throughout the show, episode three having one of my favorites, the show really catches you off guard from when most of the sequences in this show is really characters just having long conversations about their lives and what they do for a living. For a franchise that has given us some of the greatest action films of the last decade, to really be more focused on just character study and character development through conversations, it really throws you off guard, but it doesn't bore you. It's entertaining. You really love to learn how these characters can live in such a world, like living in the TVA where they seem to have no friends or family, and how much knowledge they have and how much they can do. Or even learn a little bit about Loki to see how he's been doing with, uh, through all of this and how he's been reacting to learning so much about himself and getting to explore that there's other versions of himself. It's, it's just so fascinating that the conversations really never bore you. It's like Quinn Tarantino style of writing. However, Loki isn't a show free from flaws. As a matter of fact, there was a major flaw clouding over the show, especially by the finale. 
and it's that they rushed the finale again. As I mentioned in my Winter Soldier review back in spring, as much as of an incredible experience I had watching that show, by the final episode, the writers just seem quickly to conclude everything, setting up our main characters for future films while not really giving us a chance to explore more of the new characters and even see them get to clash with our heroes some more. And the same can be said for Loki. It's starting to become a worrying trend for these shows. What makes this finale this much more frustrating compared to Winter Soldier, where admittedly we did get more time with US Agent and the Flag Smashers, we really get any time to explore Loki's twist villain, who turns out to be an alternate version of Game the Conqueror, who's actually here to protect the timelines from other versions of himself. That is such a fascinating twist and such an incredible concept to explore with so many questions they can answer. Like, what kind of powers does he have? How long has he been living there? And how has he been able to survive so many years by himself? Instead, we get a 20 minute exposition scene where he's then killed off by Sylvie, Loki's alternate self, after they have an ancestral makeout scene. And that's all, folks. However, most of these problems do not take away from what made these last few months be an absolute joy watching the show. With, admittedly, most of the problems just coming from the final episode. The first three episodes alone of Loki are some of the most fun and original content I've ever seen come out on TV of these last few years. And this just once again proves what makes the Marvel Cinematic Universe one of the greatest franchises of our time, if not of all time. A universe where a character can get a spin-off buddy cop sci-fi web series and still be one of the most unique and exciting shows to come out this year with only needing six episodes to prove it. I just really hope we get to explore more of this, these characters and this world in the season two, which is really where most of this frustration is coming from. In conclusion, with its fun and interesting characters, its insane devotion to world building with the summoning visuals to go with it, and it's incredible writing where some of the best scenes of this show is just characters having conversations. Proves once again Marvel's staying power and proves what makes Loki one of the best shows to come out so far in the decade and being one of the most unique and original shows to possibly ever be made for a comic book show. I'm going to give Loki a 9 out of 10. An absolutely incredible show, more than worth the rewatch for those first three episodes alone, and honestly, just leaves me more excited for Phase 4 than ever. As I mentioned before in my last few reviews, this summer has been an absolute roller coaster. finally just getting my shit together, really starting to get used to this adult world, and finally being able to get back into college in person. That I really, there were times that I just felt like I couldn't do it anymore, and Loki was honestly the show that was keeping me hopeful, keeping me excited every night whenever a new episode will come out. So honestly, I really enjoy watching this fucking show. I honestly want to know, what has been your favorite show so far this year? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. New reviews coming soon. I know there's a lot of Phase 4 films coming out this year and I can't wait to talk about them. And new projects are still on the way. I just need to get the crew to get them started. Thank you all for watching though once again. And as always, have a lovely day. See you guys.